Okay, let's take a look at the set node. So if I click the plus here, we can go down to data transformation and we'll see it here. It's called the edit fields node, it used to be called the set node. Or we can just, the quicker way usually is, I close that, click the plus, and straight away just type set and it'll come up at the top there. So we'll add that one. So this is one that is a useful node for creating data, usually quite simplistic data, text-based more than anything. And we'll open it up here. We've got the standard three panes. We can execute it straight away if we want to, but it's going to return nothing at the moment. So we've got no input data. I'll just switch to the JSON view here on the left and then on the right. But we can just sort of see on the left here, we've got schema view where we can get this kind of tree view of the data that's coming into this node. We've got a table view here, uh, which doesn't have any data at the moment. And then we've got JSON, which again, this is an empty JSON response. So if I look back at schema, you can see the data that comes in or is created just by the workflow running is all of these bits and pieces here where we've got the execution that uh, was run, the ID for that mode, resume URL, and then the workflow itself, the name, the ID, and whether it's active or not. So we've got a little bit of basic data and like today's date uh, there. And these are this is a field that you can use, or these are, are all fields that you can use in your workflow if you want to. Now, so the node here itself, because we're not doing anything in the action area, so the output is empty right now. So we've got a couple of options here. We've got the mode, which has two options underneath it, manual mapping, which is one item, uh, one field at a time. And then we've got JSON. So I'll just change it to JSON. And you can see it just changes this field to be text. And this is in JSON format. And JSON format is just simply kind of a key here on the left-hand side, then a colon, and then some kind of value. And it's different kinds of value, values that you can have in them. And so there's a couple of other fields. You can see this it just has one option here, supporting dot notation. And that's in here. You can support the dot notation when you're referring to items like this. If I add in uh, now, just drag and drop it in here. That doesn't have anything, but the dot is if I put a full stop there, it gives me what other options I've got. So that's using dot, no dot notation to access the various methods and fields underneath that variable. So I'll get rid of that again, but I'll jump back to manual mapping for now. So that, because this is a little bit easier for people to understand to begin with. So I clicked on the add button there and now I can add as many fields as I want here. Now each field you can see in this middle here, it has a different data type. So we have string as an option, which is, is text generally, but it can include numbers as well. It's any kind of alphanumeric special characters, just any kind of string information. Then we have number, which is obviously numbers only. Then we have Boolean, which is a yes, no, or, or true, false rather, uh, and equates to kind of a yes, no, if you wanted to. And then we have an array, which is pretty much just a list of items. And that's why that icon is showing the list there. And then we have an object. So we have these five types. They will have a, a slightly different icon here which is useful for when that icon will come up here. So you can see on the left, this first one is a string that's so got the uh, capital A. Then we've got an object, an object strings, all down here, another object, two strings, and a Boolean at the bottom there. So these, uh, these objects here is just a collection of other variables and as well. So I'll just get rid of the ones that we added that we don't need for now. So we'll just add one variable and we'll call it uh, test one and the value we'll give it as test two. So if I, um, we'll just change that to string actually. So if I hit execute step now, we can see that we now got this key value pair of, of JSON, that JSON format. So we've got test one, which corresponds to this and test two, which corresponds to this. So this uh, variable is really just a container for some piece of data that's what the variables are and the the fact that it's called a variable is important which means that, that this information can be changed so it can be changed in this step when we set it but it can also be changed in subsequent steps if we want to so that's uh, we'll leave that there and then as i said before we can add other ones we might have a test three here and a test let's add it let's add a number a five so we'll run that and we can see the output changes and then if we jump over to schema we can see we've got this kind of a format here. We've got test one, test two, test three is five, 
and the table format, just the different views. So these three are all just showing the exact same thing, just in a different format. So I generally work with the, the JSON view. The schema, the schema view can be quite handy as well for giving you this kind of tree structure that you see here where you can expand and collapse objects. And so let's add a Boolean. Say so that's test four, uh, test five. And it's false. So that'll come up there now. And we might have an array. Test six. Let's just see if I leave it empty. It's going to error for us because it's an expecting an array, but we got nothing. So for this one, for an array, we can have different types of data in it. So we might just put that in there. So now you can see because I use these square brackets, that is telling the system this is an array so we, or a list of things. And then we have the list of items just separated by a comma. And so in this case, we've got now, and you can see here, it's added the suffix of the, f the first item, which is item zero, because it's a zero based array, which means it starts at zero. So item one effectively is, or item zero is set to one, that corresponds to that one. And then the second one is item four, which is here. But these could also be a string. So we might say uh, test array one. And you can have space after the comma if you want. It doesn't matter. It gets ignored either way. Test array to execute that. So you can see we've still got the two items here. And it's, it's using the name of the array and then has the suffix of the number. But now the values have changed to two strings. And you can even, with an array, have different kinds of data in it. You, generally, you don't. An array will almost always have consistent data throughout it. So just strings or just numbers or just Boolean, etc. But uh, it is possible. So that's an array. Okay, and then the last one is an object. So we'll change that there. Again, I'll just hit execute. And again, it's going to tell us, hey, there's, there's a, an error here. So we'll call this test seven, or maybe we should call them what they are, object. Make it easier. Boolean number and okay so we're still getting the error here so for an object we want to actually effectively we're creating json in here so we need to have the key value pair so we'll say object key colon and then we'll just use string and say object value and we're using the curly braces here to denote that it's an object so now when we create it We've got the object which maps here. We've got the object key which maps to this one. And we've got object value which maps to this one. And so then if we have a comma, we can have object key two and object value two. And we can execute that and we can see we've got a second item under this object. Now, interestingly, if you take away the name here on the left hand side and execute it, it will actually get added to the previous item if it's an array. If I take out the array, uh, it will get added to the Boolean and, and so on. So you can uh, add them in as kind of nested like that if you want to. Uh, let's go back to, let's bring that array back in there. You can also drag and drop by just getting your cursor on the, the six dots here on the left hand side. So we had array four, something like that. Uh, we'll do that. Okay, didn't change it to array. Okay, so now we've got array added back in there and we execute and we're getting all of this, this data coming out here. So let's just close that, jump back to the Workflow, so we can execute it, and if we jump in there, we're getting this data out. So now, if we add another set node, and we come into here and we execute this step, this this node is returning nothing because it's not doing anything here. But now we're getting the input from all of the nodes that are to the left of this node or up in the hierarchy. So we've got the schema view there, we've got the table view, we've got JSON. So the JSON will generally show you the most recent node, the previous node, and then you can select earlier nodes by using the drop down. So this is good. This is why I prefer this view because it's focused on just the 
previous node uh, and then you go earlier if you need to but the schema will show you a list of all of them usually with them collapsed like this and then you can go and, and expand it if you need it but my preference is usually the JSON view uh, it also shows you the items color coded a little bit here so we've got the number we've got the boolean numbers here in green we've got the keys in white and then we've got the values uh, for string object uh, and the array bit here in purple and what else is there so that's the manual mapping so for this one let's change this one to be json so again by default it'll just show this kind of template of data information for add option here we've uh, oh, that's one, one thing i forgot manual mapping we also we have the support dot notation that we have under the json option but we also have ignore type conversion errors so this is if you're getting errors converting from one type to another generally you don't want to turn that on because you want to know if there are those conversion type errors you may need to for whatever specific use case you've got and there's also this include other option uh, other input fields so let's use that in this next one let's just change this to set variables okay and uh, let's change it to set via manual mapping and this one's going to be set variables via json we've got some good names save it there okay let's go back into this one so now we've got the json option here and at the moment when i execute it i'm just going to get my json values here if i turn this on include other input fields and by default it's going to be set to all and execute it not only does it give me the fields that i'm setting here it also gives me the previous previously set information so just by the previous node uh, and then we've also got selected and we've got all accept options as well so you could exclude certain ones i might say exclude the string field but it'll include everything else or i might say i only want to include the the string field here so it gives you quite a, a bit of control over what is the output of this particular field uh, but i'll just turn it back off again so now we're only getting the the data from here so we can change these to be whatever we want this is string key one and this is string value one and we can see that the it updates again here on the left on the right hand side in the output window according to what i've set in the json and so we can actually take if we copy this whole thing here we can actually paste it in and we can execute and at the moment it doesn't like that because it's got the square brackets here so if we execute it now now it is correct json that it's looking for and it's going to output and it looks exactly the same as the output that's coming in so this is uh, you can see how it kind of maps to from the manual mapping to the json uh, in here and we can say include the other input fields and that's now going to give us only the same data because we we're effectively overwriting the existing key so that's changing the variable value so if i say test three here so now this is test three and the input is test two but I'm overwriting it because I'm using the same key field and now I'm saying it's test three. And we can do the same thing even with manual mapping. If I say, if I call it string here and I say test three and we run that, we're including the other fields, but we're changing test three and we're bringing everything else over that's the same. If we turn that off again, the only output we'll get is string test three. Turn it on. We get string test three still but we, then we get all of these other fields so in this case we're overwriting that particular field but we're just including all of the other ones so it's a pretty good node for data manipulation that you'll generally use in, in a lot of your workflows